Welcome back to the channel, I'm C. I'm B. And today we're going to react to Andrew Tate's part five. Yes. Part five. Oh, um, <laughs> Andrew Tate's best moments, part five. Best podcast moments. He said best moments. Podcast moments, moments. Okay. They can say it's a title. You know what he says. So why even say it in the first place? So we got one more part to go <laughs> after this one. Then it will be done. It'll be our last part. But yeah, let's begin. I think. I've always felt like I was in war. Very interesting. Women don't feel like they need men in a physical sense because life is soft. But it's, mm. but it's, but it's bullshit. And it's bullshit because you still need men by proxy, one. And two, the second life gets difficult. You very quickly you very quickly learn how much you need men. But women will go, I'm an independent. I don't need no man because I have an OnlyFans and men bay my OnlyFans. And if anyone comes up to me, I'll call a male police officer. I don't need men. Shut up, you fucking idiot. Of course you do. Mm. You just named your whole life is based on fucking men. The road you're driving on was paved by a man. The house you're living in was built by a man. The car you're driving was, was designed by a man. Your whole life depends on men. And the second anything bad were to happen to you, the second you were physically threatened, or times were to get hard, or war were to start, or famine, or riots, the first thing you do is find a big strong man, shit yourself, and throw the feminism out the window. Mm -hmm. Feminism goes out the fucking window the second that the snow needs shoveling, or there's a fucking broken down car, or the tire needs changing. Then all that crap vanishes. It's garbage. The optimists of the world believe that it's just social pressure and that one company bans you and the others just fall in line, whereas me, Perhaps a pessimist, but truthfully a realist, I understand that it's very orchestrated and it's designed to teach you a lesson. They want to teach you a lesson. They want you to be broke. They want you to struggle to function in society and they want you to have no voice. They canceled, attempted to cancel me because I became the most Googled man on the planet and I had mass influence over the youth, especially males, 18 to 23, 24 year old males. Yeah. And those are the backbone of the slave force. And we always have been and always will be. It doesn't matter if you look at modern times or ancient times. If you had to build an aqueduct or a road or raise an army, you'd go and find the 18 to 22, 23 year old fighting age males. We're the most important demographic on the planet. We're the strongest, we have the most energy, we're the most capable of doing the most difficult tasks. And they try very hard to police that demographic specifically. The reason that they talk all this garbage about toxic masculinity and the reason that they purport in every single movie that men are getting beaten up by chicks and, and every single family movie on Netflix, the woman's the smart one and the dad's a bumbling idiot and all these different things is they're trying to reduce the masculine tendency to rebel to a degree because they want this subsect of the population ready to either go die in a ditch or go work for fucking nothing. And they, what they don't want, the last thing they want is this subsect of the population to think because that's the subsect of, of a populace which causes a revolution. If, if, if millions of 18 to 25 year old men stand in one place, that's a revolution, that's it, it's over. It's not the women marching. The, the women can march, that's fine. But when shit happens, men have to come along and deal with it. Police have to protect them. Women, women can march and have an opinion, that's great. But an actual revolution is gonna be men. I'll tell you some of the scary- Do you think if Andrew Tate was more like talking to, I don't know, like older men in the like 50s, 60s, 60s, you think it would be, he would be as big as he is, or they would like Shala, you know, he would be as, ha as hated as, as he is? I think he would still be hated, but he wouldn't be seen as much as of a threat as he is. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because they're going to be hating the words that he's saying, but the fact that it's affecting more of that younger group that he mentioned is what the problem yeah. is. I think that's also the reason why he blew up, because that younger group is the one that actually used social media use those kind of things that actually blow, blow him up. And, and I think you can say anything about what you want. I think even in the comments, people were saying, oh, he's a sex trafficker. You can believe what, 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 you, what you believe. But um, if if he didn't speak to that mm -hmm. audience, you know, like, if it's like whatever he's saying, you can say he is whatever, you can say he's a bad person, whatever, you know, it's your opinion. I'm, I'm not gonna try to disagree with you on that. If you think he's a bad person, that's fine. But you have to admit that his, me his message appeals to y young men. Mm -hmm. And what, what are we gonna say? All young men are, you know, misogynistic? You know what I mean? And I would like to say, like, it's, it's kind of similar to Trump in a way. You don't have to like the person it's themselves, but you have to at least admit that you can understand or, or at least somewhat agree to what they're what it is that they're trying to say and what it is that they're trying to do. You know what I mean? Like, I don't me personally, 
I was never really a fan of um, Trump's personality, but the more I heard him speak and the more I heard what he wants to do to change the world, the more I liked him. I still don't really like his personality. I feel like he could be a little bit Pete, softer, Pete. but I can't based off my opinion solely on that. And a lot of people do. That's what I feel like is the issue. Two things. A lot of people cannot separate the the personality from like pilot policy, right? To be honest, most people don't look at policies anyways. Like technically, the presidential election is a popularity contest. If you think mm -hmm. about it, that's why it is. Because how many people you know? In the world, that's gonna actually look at the president's policies. Either it's a popularity contest, or there's like one or two things that the president says that they, they like that's gonna benefit them, and they will vote for the president. That's it. Mm -hmm. No one actually go through the and look to all the things, things yeah. he said he's gonna do, or look at the bills. He's, he's the, you know, no one does that. It's a popularity contest, or there's one or two things that the president says he's gonna do for, for you. Mm -hmm. That you like, but I do think actions it. speak louder than all that. Or because, political party. Or, you, or your party. Because, like, look party. at it now. Like, I'm using Trump as an example, but I, I find it similar to Andrew Tate. That's why I'm using that, just in case you guys are wondering why we're speaking on Trump. Because um, look at it now. When Trump first went into office, there was a lot of hate because of his personality. But after seeing his track record and seeing the actions that he put into place, now those people that once hated him now love him. You think, you think it's changing? It's changing. I think we're gonna, have, see we're gonna have to see that in the next election. I, you, it's you so much see, changing. You could see it. I seen the most change when he got his mugshot. That's when I've seen like you know. Well, even before that, there was some change. It may have um, spiked it a, a little bit more, but there was some change. People were changing their opinions because they saw what he was doing versus what is now happening okay. in the world with the current president. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the same with Andrew Tate because before he went to jail. People liked him, but there was a lot of people that didn't like him. And then after he went to jail and after finding out all the secrecies that were behind him in jail and stuff like that, I feel like a lot of people are starting to slowly change their opinions on him. Mm. Yeah, because I feel you like, know what like, I mean? like they made him more popular, that's for sure. They made him way bigger because they, they held him in a thing for like the process that's legal in women, yeah, and then, you know... They they charge them, they release them on the house yeah. and it's like so it's, it's a whole it's a lot of things that they did. It's like but you know, also his weird. actions, like during that whole process, how he could yeah he could see himself like in a in a like I guess what class is this in a more like what class is this in a way that's not as flamboyant you know like he he, he used to and I don't know if flamboyant is the best word to use you know like as not as, not as out no, yeah out expressive there, you know? it's expressive he doesn't say. Things that people might take offense to as as much, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. those certain words you use, that even though the person get what you're saying, but because you use a certain word like submissive, that, yeah. that kind of word, people get all crazy about it. Yeah. You don't you don't, he doesn't, he doesn't use those words as as much. Let's continue. I think that's a big reason why his popularity went went up too. Very shit that happened, man. Like um, reporters were doing articles about me. And they found my members of my family, found my mother. They started harassing my mother and put people outside her house and protests outside and trying to track her down, all this crazy stuff. Then what happened is reporters start calling all my ex-girlfriends and saying, hey, I know oh, you've noticed fuck. Andrew Tate's in the media. If you have a story uh, about any of his misogynistic comments or anything he did oh, bad or anything bad he did when you were together, we'll pay you 50,000 pounds. Feminism in and of itself can't be defended. Any idea, the point of an idea is that it can be defended. By I know. People. I'm not going to say it happened or if it didn't happen, but if it did happen, that's that's crazy. That's like bribery right there. It's like mm -hmm. straight up bribery. It's like, and how much you want to bet? Like, a lot of people. Half or even more than half of his girlfriends took that. No, they didn't. None of them did. That's what the really? six point. None of them did. Wow, I'm shocked. Exactly. It's weird because if you took anybody and you give people that known money to say they did something bad, especially a lot of people ex, take it. A lot of women are petty. A lot of There's a lot of petty it. women out there that would If it definitely... did happen and they didn't take it, that shows, you know, some something. Yeah. People who believe in it. This has been the whole point of war since the dawn of time. It doesn't matter if it was the Christians against the Hindus. It doesn't matter if it was the Germans against the French. There were people who had ideas and ideologies, and they are prepared to fight each other to defend their ideology. Feminism is an ideology which cannot be defended by feminists. The only people who can defend feminism are the men who subscribe to the garbage. If, you, if all the feminists were to get in a, in, a, in a line and say, we want feminism, and the conservative men were to get in a line, you will learn very quickly it's bullshit. I, I don't think the people who are running the world are much different. I'm, I'm pausing a lot, but, I, but I, I heard this thing to the guy who says that 
um, maybe we can talk about that in another video. We said like all the rights that a woman has is given to them by men because women and themselves cannot defend their rights. Hmm. So let's say let's say we say women you, you have did this right right if 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 other men said women have no rights right what are women gonna do, do about it if all collectively all men said women have no rights that's what happened in the past other men or most of the men or men, the powerful men said women had no rights and guess what they had no rights and it, it, it was up to men to actually give women the, the rights you understand know what I'm saying yeah so but women had a play with in with that it, you huh? know what I mean no I'm not saying they didn't have a play. But if all the men said you have no rights, there's nothing the woman can the woman can do to actually get the rights because at the, at the end of the day it comes down to free physical force. Let's let's say let's say women have rights right? and and let's say a man violated the woman's rights, right? Mm -hmm. What the woman gonna do? Call a, a a higher you know authority to deal with it. Let's say the man doesn't doesn't, well, doesn't agree with that. Ultimately, you gotta call the cops to physically get the men and put them in jail. But where we don't have physical strength, we have a lot of um, mental capacity. So like where no, manipulation is in are, play. And I'm not saying women are not, are, not, are not smart. No, no, I'm saying that. I'm saying to counterweight us not being able to physically attack to get what we want, there's um, mental attacks. I get your point. That could be put into place get, by a woman to I, get what they I want. I get your point, but I think only, only a few women have that capacity to actually control the men behind the scenes. Because well, it also depends because, on who the leader is. Like, for example, if you have a leader like Andrew Tate, he's able to rally even the dumbest men to do what they need to do to get to get them in a higher status, right? So now, if you have a woman that's kind of like an Andrew Tate that's able to Valley the woman. I'm saying, how, 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 how many women you think of oh, that, that exist? It depends. The only way you could ever, My, the only way you'll ever really know is when a situation like that but happens. But it did happen. And if a, a woman it did happen. picks up, when? in the past. Yeah, but a woman did rally together and do that. Those the women that the, started the, the, of, the, the well, protest and with all the help that. of men. Because if 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 it came down to yes and no, because that's what I'm saying about the manipulation process. Men helped, but. Women, so so you think women could have gained the rights without the help of men? Is that what you think? What? Women could have gained the rights without the help of men? Is that what you think? No, they used the but help that, of men. That's they, what I'm saying. They though. used it to their advantage. You know what I'm saying? But I'm saying, by the end of the day, um, men still had to come in to give you rights. If other men said you have no rights, you have no rights. I'm not saying I'm not I, I'm not saying like you know I'm all the right, but that's, that's a, 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 an argument I, I, I've, I've heard, and I haven't heard like a convincing, um counter to it like because because at the end of, of the day to enforce your rights because in the past right it was a group of men says you know i am i have, I have these rights and this man said you have no rights mm -hmm. and the other day they had to go to war whoever wins that's who had the power that's whose rights were you know very valid mm. i'm saying and, and, and that's why in the past all the men did the fighting Be because at the end of the day it's gonna have to come to physical force even now, you can say that, but if you say now, a bunch of men come and say, you know, women have no rights. It's going to take other men to fight but those what men. But about trans women? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, tell us about the, of the, 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 the comments. It's, a, it's a argument I've, I've heard. <laughs> tell me if you can, like, you know, give me a good, you know, um, counter to it different than you and I. Perhaps they have different resource and different capability, but I think that human nature stays constant around. And me, I run a fairly large empire now. Let's say I have 200 or 300 people working for me. If there was somebody inside of my organization which ignored my orders and inspired other people inside of my organization to be insubordinate, then I would fire them. So when you're running a country or the world and you are, and there's somebody inside of the world that's inspiring others to be insubordinate, then you're gonna to wanna to fire them to some degree. I don't know if you know the, the story of Socrates. Socrates had to poison himself. He was arrested and he was accused of corrupting the youth. That's why. He was tried for making the young, military-aged men of Greece think for themselves. That's not allowed. They're not allowed. Since, since the dawn of human time, you're not allowed to do that. And I'm, I'm committing the cardinal sin. I'm saying to men, listen, they're trying to tell you X, and that's garbage. The truth is Y. I think that most people failing in life know very well they're failing. And it doesn't matter what avatar you decide to absorb or who you decide to be. 
You can decide to be it and you know true in your heart if you're giving 100% of your energy towards becoming it or not. Doesn't matter if you want to become a famous musician, doesn't matter if you want to become a bodybuilder, doesn't matter if you want to become a, become a pro fighter, doesn't matter what you want to be, you know in your heart if you're actually trying or not. You have to decide what you want to be and try and become it. And a lot of the people who are genuinely unhappy or miserable in their hearts know they're not trying that hard. The things I say- I think that's true. Most people know that they, they're failing and they're less than they could be. Like, like um, Jeremy Peterson says. You know? Yeah, it's about trying to push yourself to get what you want. Because it, it's easy to be lazy. It's easy to not do something. It's hard to get up and, and work and do what you got to do. Yeah, that's why most people are, you know, because only a few people have, have what it takes to actually get to the top. That somehow people believe are controversial are exactly the way the world functioned in like the 90s, the 80s, the 70s. All of the entire period of human history, men had a role of masculinity, women had a role of femininity, we worked as a team. Now the world's come along and they've destroyed and broken everything. And there's this new progressive think and this new generation of women who seem to believe that if we completely fuck it all up, it's gonna end up better. And my argument to that is, listen, we went from walking around in fields in small nomadic groups to building cities, to building the pyramids, to going to the moon. We managed to go from a few thousand to billions of people, populate the entire planet, build canals, build skyscrapers, cities. All of this was done based on the back of man being a man, woman being a woman, working together as a family. And now I was destroyed. Now, now they're gonna come along and fuck it up. What they're trying to do to the populace, I truly believe is evil. I don't know whether they believe it's evil or they believe it's good. That's their decision. I don't know their moral backing, but I personally believe it's evil and I stand counter to it. So why would they want me to have a voice? Why would they want me to have influence? The reason they deleted me is because I was massively influential and they didn't like the direction in which I was pushing the youth of the world, which was to think for themselves. So they thought I had to go. That's, that's the real reason they did it. And they never even told me why. You and me. I think from what I said earlier about how this the thing we have now is how we build pyramids, we build skyscrapers, we are where we are now. I think Joe Pearson also, also says that this too. We have to be cautious about tearing the whole system down. Because we know, we know, we have proof that that system has gotten us where we are, where we are now. Mm -hmm. And you can agree or not if we are at the best place, whatever, right? People, God's gonna say, oh, we have misogyny, so it's, so it's wrong that we build skyscrapers or whatever. But I would say that we got in the place of parity with the system that we have now. Mm -hmm. I think. If you want to just destroy everything all, all at once, you don't know what you're going to replace it with. Yeah. Right? You have to be, be careful with that. Because you don't know if, because what you're going to replace it with doesn't have a track record. What, what we have now had millions of years of te testing. And I we think, know it works. I think people get caught up in the perfectness of it all. Like, it wasn't perfect, granted. There was things that could have been better for women and men. But the main point was, at that time, we were working as a team to get where we needed to get in a society. Nowadays, we're so focused on trying to make everything perfect. Like, there, there has to be equal rights for everybody. There has to be um, tolerance for everybody. We have to change pronouns for people. Not equal. Everything. Want equity for everybody. Well, you know what That's I mean. Yeah. Every you're trying so hard to make everything so perfect, and 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 in that aspect, it's causing you to fight with each other, men versus women, black versus white. You know, uh, I, and, and instead of just working together to get to a society where things can be. Close to perfect. Uh, I think it's, it's, I think maybe it's unavoidable because we, in the past, we have to fight against lions and tigers and, and sh shelter in the wet weather. And I wouldn't do that anymore. We have a life so, so easy. Human beings need a fight to be had. Mm -hmm. So we create a fight where there's no, where, where a fight doesn't need to be had. You know what I'm saying? This yeah, but happen, then doing, our lives are too, too There's like, still easy fights nowadays. to be had. That's what I'm saying. Like we're picking like these fights to make a perfect world instead of picking fights that need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Like Those, the income in our society. Like um There's things, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like I can't I'm drawing blanks now, but there are other there fights that we should be There are um, people on on Countries that are still poor, that have no water, that have to, yeah. eat, they have to drink dirty water, and they, they get dying and, 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 and sick. But that's not sexy. Why would you? No one's gonna, you know. You say, oh, let's 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 fight those people. They live all over across the country. You never see them. 
So why will why will people here in the West fight for them? They never see them. Yeah. But what do you see? They're fighting for what they see, and what they see is all like, or life here is so easy that what you end up fighting for, it's you know it is nothing really ma- matter. You know what I'm in saying? What really needs needs what the fight that needs to happen, or all the way across the ocean where you don't really. Well, no body. yes and no, because you know I mean? there's also fights in our own backyard that need to be taken care of. Yeah, but I can just pass on that as, you know... They're not as grand, sexy. but exactly. like I feel like I feel like if we don't take care of those fights, then how are we going to be able to help anybody else out there? Yeah, that's true. That's true. We could take a house in order first. We are both going to run for a, a position. We're going to go both run for, let's say, the mayor of nobody, of nowhere town. Some imaginary place. I've sold my soul to the devil and you haven't. So you're an honest man and you want to make the companies pay tax. I don't give a shit, I just want power. So the companies give me money. So one, I get a nicer campaign trail. Two, the companies also own all the media. So they lie about you, tell the world you're evil, like they just lied about me. They lie about you, tell all the horrible things they can, say I'm a good person. They, they fuck with your bank accounts, mess with you, met, lie with you in the media. You're trying to, to run your campaign. I'm fully funded. The media's on my side. Tour bus, posters, da, da, da. Who's gonna win? I win. Men built the earth. I'm not saying men are perfect, but the entire world that you're existing under was built by men. Yeah, it's All true. of it. So, so, and the point I'm making is now we're entering a world of new think. And that the problem with new think is it's not tested. I don't give a shit what anyone's- Oh, I just is. said that. What I'm saying, <laughs> as a matter of fact is we had 5,000 years of history that tells us how the world works with X and Y together. We're now entering a new paradigm. There's no 5,000 years of history. So whatever you believe about how it's going to work or it's going to be better or worse, whatever, that's just you guessing. Everyone is guessing, right? So we're entering a brand new paradigm and everything's completely <laughs> fucked up. They're scared of a... It's funny because John Person said, said, the, said the same thing. Mm-hmm. Said the same thing. Message. They're always going to be scared of any message that comes from somebody that people idolize and respect, which is basically telling people to be strong physically and mentally and to resist a slave mind and to think for themselves because their number one agenda is to create worker drones. They don't want you to think for yourself, which means that to a degree you need to be weak, both mentally and physically. The number one habit that people need to adopt, and this is a habit I had for a very long time, and I've actually recently cleared it from my brain because I've reached a point where peace of mind is worth more than money. But every single time money is spent, you need to identify how your money was taken from you. And I say taken because money can't be made. Money is taken. Because the only people who can make money are the government. So if you're a government, you can make money. You can print it from thin air or a bank. But if you're a person, you're not making money. You're convincing other people to give it to you. You're taking money from others. So every single time you spend money on anything, you need to identify how it was taken from you. Let's understand something. To the sexual marketplace, females have always been, and still to a degree, are the gatekeepers. It's men will, you can think about it in a very simplistic way. This is not the case, but let's simplify it for the sake of argument. Imagine men will run around and fuck anything. And women are the ones who say yes or no. You are the gatekeepers that have all the power. And this is what's actually truly interesting about the sexual marketplace, because whenever women go, there's not enough good men, nah, 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 then why are you fucking, of course, why would they be good if you don't make them be good? You're fucking losers. So, so, so if you're weak, both mentally and physically, one, you're not prepared to defend your ideas, but especially if you're mentally weak, this is such a, a big point of it. And this is why I get so much flack for saying depression isn't real and all these things. If you're mentally weak and you're concerned in your own mind about even living day-to-day life because you find it so, such a struggle, there's no way you're going to take on a larger battle than yourself. You're not going to start resisting enslavement. You're not going to start fighting against COVID mandates. You're not going to be doing any of that stuff because you're too busy looking in the mirror, crying your eyes out. You're selfish. You're self-obsessed. Happy people don't do that. Happy people, okay, my, my life is good. I'm happy. I want my family to be happy. I want my community to be good. I care about my country. They, they, that's why they don't want you to be happy. They don't want to be miserable, weak. And, and they want to delete any morality from your brain because it's a baseline morality that prevents them from installing the slave programming. Let me make this clear. Go on, sir. Do you have any idea how hard it is to actually be, no bullshit, a man? And I say this and women go, oh yeah, I do that. As soon as most women encounter any kind of problem, the first thing they do is turn to a man. <laughs> their man, their dad, the mechanic, the police, a man. If you actually put a woman from a problem and go, no men, they're like, oh, shh, whoa, fuck. They're, it's a mental breakdown. A uh, cloud comes, it rains. Flap will help with that. What is this? Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> James falls down to the ground. It, it goes under under the ground, whatever, goes into a stream. It moves into the stream, goes to the ocean, evaporates again up to a cloud, floats somewhere else, falls down again. It's always moving. That's how money is. People think that money is in these large, stagnant pools hidden, hidden in people's bank accounts. That's not really true. Money is constantly moving all the time. And if you can find a way to get in between it and stand in the right place at the right time, you're gonna get wet. What they are doing is convincing people to ignore their own eyes. When you walk down- Before you continue, I think, I think, um, I, th I don't know if I've said this before, so it's not a new thing. I think kids at school should learn, learn about m money. Like that should be like a, like, that's saying you need for the, for the rest of your, no, for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And we don't teach it in high school. Finance. To me, that's yeah. crazy. Because after you leave high school, you technically you're an adult now, right? You're gonna have to deal with money for the rest of your life. I had two classes in my whole schooling that actually taught about that. One was like in elementary school when they show you how to balance a checkbook. Like first of all, why are you okay, teaching that, elementary school, school no. kids that? No, well, I don't, no. Like you high should school, you should be teaching that to high school kids, not middle school elementary school kids. Um, the second one was a high school class that taught me about the s stocks but it wasn't in depth it was more like stocks exist they go up they, they go down yeah let's do a, <laughs> a, an experiment <laughs> you have this amount of money what stocks are you putting that in and then when you do it wrong they, the teacher basically calls you stupid i know like, it's uh, like also you can say that kids like uh, high school kids don't really like care about that kind of stuff but i feel like you it's so important you should still have it, and some of them will. And you'll be you know surprised I mean? what sticks in your head. That's like true? I have four math formulas that are still stuck <laughs> in my, my head, head that I don't even fucking use. So if I actually learned about like money, money, yeah, money. that'd be useful. Yeah, yeah. And you don't even have to teach them like exactly how money. Teach them the concept of of money in general, how money works. Like I said, money is always moving. Like how money works, just the concept of it. That would help a lot. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know anything about how money works and how it's mm -hmm. moved around and, you know. And a lot of parents don't. Yeah. And then they try to teach their kids how, how to save and all this stuff. And the most that they could tell them is put your money in a savings account. And it's going to lose, lo lo lose value every, every year because yeah, of exactly. inflation. Most people, a lot of people don't know that. You put money in a savings account, it loses money mm -hmm. every, every year. So you're not really, you have to invest your, your money. But let, let's continue. Now, when you walk into the toilet, doing is convincing people to ignore their own eyes. When you walk down, when you walk into the toilet as a woman, and you see a big man, and you have to pretend that that's not a man. You have to pretend it's not, because if you if you acknowledge what your own eyes are telling you, you're the enemy, right? Once they can convince you to ignore your own eyes, well, that's the end of the game. Isn't it? Now, now it doesn't matter if they see the sky is blue because the media said the sky is red. If you're in a room full of ice cream experts, ice cream, and all they talk about is ice cream, how to make ice cream, their favorite flavor, the best way to store it, how much it costs to produce, how to transport it, and that's all they talk about is ice cream. Even if you have no interest in ice cream, over a long enough period of time, you're gonna end up knowing stuff about ice cream. You're gonna end up knowing shit. And be like, ah, that's double chocolate this, it costs this much, and this is how they moved it. Then you're gonna know things about ice cream. If you're in a room full of people who only talk about money, exactly then you're gonna we're end up knowing about, about money. It's exactly what you were saying. If you mm -hmm. just talk about it, a lot of things are gonna, are gonna stick. Are gonna stick, yeah. It's just, it's just common sense. I mean, if it's early enough, it will, be, it will become common sense. You know, they should know have like a class in every stage, like in elementary school, like a little beginning class that teaches you how to count money, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And then in middle school, a little bit more advanced. You're right, because a lot of times, um, the kids these days, they, they don't know have how technology. to make change. You don't even know, you don't even know how to make change. No. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> and then in um, high school, you could do, go more in depth with like stocks and bonds. Yeah. And they should even make it a mandatory class in college. You know how your first year of college, you have to take a certain amount of mandatory classes? <laughs> that should be one of the mandatory classes. I know. C college, I know, because you got to pay for college. Yeah, but you know, in the first yeah, year, the you have to take, yeah, you have like these certain classes that you have to take. Yeah. So if you made one of them like a stock class where you learn about rough IRAs and stuff like that, that would be and, fucking yeah, helpful. Yeah, I think at least retirement, and, uh, at least you, you have to learn about how to get enough money to retire. Yeah. Maybe that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. If you you start small in the elementary school and you gradually make it more um, in depth mm -hmm. as you go up in, uh, into even college. Yeah.
It's exactly the same thing. No, money is an amplifier. So that's, that's the first thing about money. Money amplifies. Men can make money. Money does not make men. If you're a dork and you get rich, you're a rich dork. <laughs> if you're a G and you get rich, you're a top G. Cowardice is the problem. The world is, is full of cowards. We suffer from a pandemic of cowardice. We've never suffered from any other pandemic the last three years. People are absolutely not really cowards and they do to me what they did to me to scare people. If you tell the average person you're gonna lose contact with basically everyone you can speak to, you're not gonna have a voice anymore, you're not gonna have a bank account, you're not gonna be able to make money online, you're not gonna be able to move anywhere, you're not gonna be able to transact, we're gonna wreck you head to toe, the average person can't deal with that, right? On top of the, fa that, the fact that the average person is employed and they're scared of losing their job, scared of their employer. I'm in a unique situation because I'm extremely difficult to hurt, but the average person, as soon as you hurt their money, their life is over. When was the last time you sat down with someone and talked about money? What do you mean talk about money? Well, if you don't know what to talk about, then you don't understand money. So go learn how money works. Go learn how a bank works. Go sit on YouTube for free. You don't just pay 50 grand in four years at a university. Go sit on YouTube and understand money, banking, or the real estate market, any of it. Understand the, the last housing price crash, why it happened. Understand mortgage rates and how that's affected by interest rates. Understand it, and then go sit with someone else who understands it and talk about it. Oh yeah, 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 I should do that, yeah, yeah. Back to the point is this when you were at your okay, peak value the on the money thing but um it's either one or two of the extremes either it's like he said they're gonna say yeah 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 but then not do anything about it or they're gonna watch all the videos and stuff like that but not put any action behind it yeah like i said uh, like most of the thing i learned money wise is from from youtube because it's the information is out there especially nowadays information is out there but a lot of people don't have the interest in it in it. Unless, just unless you know, let's tell them you do this and you're gonna be a millionaire overnight. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's what they watch. Yeah. They don't watch. Listen, you put you put you, you invest this amount of money from your paycheck every, every year into a, a foreign care or you get a Roth IRA, right? Yeah. You mm -hmm. put this amount of money every year on, on it. When you retire, you take out five percent, live off of it for your entire life. That should be the baseline, cause so you don't have to retire broke, right? But no one wanna hear about about you know how you're gonna be able to get a million dollars in thirty years. They were the million dollars now. Yeah. And that's probably, I, I think because of that, you, the YouTube um, creators, they are incentivized to create those kind of videos. Here's how you can get a million dollars in, in, in a year. Those videos do, do good, right? So it's like the market. It's why people want to watch. So that's why they, they make. Mm -hmm. All the channels that make the other kind of um, um, money content where, where it's, it's like 30 year investments, those um, channels don't get that much views. So they don't make them as much. Or oh, YouTube don't push them out to the top. So nobody sees, sees, the sees them. Yeah. Exactly. I think it's just... Uh, yeah, but I feel like even if you do watch those videos, you could sit there and watch a million videos and have all that knowledge in your head. But if you don't apply it, that it's useless. You know what yeah, I'm saying? That's true. Yeah, that's true. So like, you need to be able to have the willpower to imply that knowledge and also look, look for that knowledge. Yeah. I think that's something that like... And you take, actually teach, can teach young men that's positive instead of just mm -hmm. all the other things they focus on. Well, that's what I meant where there's like two sides of the coin there. Like he said, you could either have somebody that just yeses you that death, but then that won't put in the work, won't even look at the videos. Or you could have somebody that actually does put in the work and look at the videos, but they don't put the action to back the, all that work yeah, up. Yeah, I think that's all, everything like young men have to listen to. Especially um, if he, is, he has the hold of young men and he's saying this thing about money, I think because of that, young men are gonna to try to do, do what? Learn about money, mm -hmm. right? And plus, they want they want the Bugattis and the you know I call the Bugatti. If you want that, guess what? You gonna have to learn how to make m money. Yeah. So at the end of the day, not everybody's gonna be able to get big, rich enough to get a Bugatti, but if you aim for the stars, I mean you aim, aim, aim for the for the moon, you may land upon the stars. There we go. You aim for the moon, you land on the stars. I forgot the saying for for a second there. <laughs> for the stars. But you get what, what I'm saying. I think overall. Overall, entertainment is a positive effect on, on, on young men. Other people might, might disagree. But I think for the people who actually watch long-form content like this, this um, podcast, mm -hmm. where actually talk about money and all this other stuff, I think it's a positive impact of, 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 overall. You can argue that something thing he says is, is negative. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with you about that. Something he says might con be construed as something else. Mm -hmm. I agree. But well, I think most of what he says to... is positive. That goes back to what I was saying, like, you don't have to like somebody's personality to understand their viewpoints and to listen to what they're trying to put out into the world. Like, I, don't, I, I can hate a person, but if they're giving me 
positive information that could actually help me for my future, I'm gonna listen to what they gotta say. And I, and I know how to separate the, you know, what, what they were saying, go the chaff from, from the, you know, saying the chaff, whatever, it doesn't matter. So I, I know, you, we do I, that I at work separate. every day. If you think about it, we do that at work every day. You you have a boss that you hate, right? But he has more knowledge and experience than you do in the field that you're working in. Yeah. So you're going to listen to him. You don't like him. You think he's a, a prick. You don't have to like him. You don't have to like him. But you're going to listen and follow his lead because you know he has more experience and more knowledge and it's going to help you out in the long run. We do that every day at work. So why can't we do that outside of work? Yeah. Like with people like that, it's like we don't agree with everything he says. You don't have to agree with everything he says. No. No one should agree with everything somebody else says. Exactly. You know what I mean? But you can take the parts that, that can help you and live and the, apply the, the, it live to your life. Past. Yeah. You no, know? but that's, 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 all, that's, all I got. that's all I do with it. all my, um, even if it's podcasts or whatever, YouTube, YouTubers, celebrities, everything. We at I least take try what to I think is useful and live, live the rest. That's what, what, what I do. I think that's what everybody should aim to do instead of just saying just cancel. So everything. But yeah, guys, all I got. Anything else to say? No, that's it. Till next time.